Okay, so we're done with the ice relation. So let's move on to the LM relation. And for the LM relation, we need to take a look at the financial market. And similar to the, the goods market, we let's take a look at the equilibrium condition in the financial market. And what we had was that money supply had to be equal to the money demand in the economy. Now, money supply was obviously the nominal supply of money, just basically just how much money was available in the economy. And money demand could be uh, written in this form, the nominal income times a function of the interest rate. And this was the equilibrium condition in the money market. But remember, what we had done is for both the money supply and the income, we had taken the nominal value. We had completely ignored the, the price level. And we're, we're going to change that now because we want to take a look at the real level. So let me just tell you why. Why thinking about the nominal value is not really helpful. So suppose you have 100 taka in your pocket. Now the fact that you have 100 doesn't really mean anything. 100 today, let's say, for example, is not the same as having 100 taka back in 1980 or 1990. They're very different times. So what we are really interested in finding out is how much we can buy with this 100 taka. So suppose whatever it is that you want to buy is worth 20 taka. So with your 100 taka, you can buy five units of this thing. But suppose back in 19, uh, in 1980, it was worth uh, 10 taka. So with 100 taka, you could buy 10 units of this thing. And so you see that 100 taka, just looking at the nominal value, is not really helpful for us. What we need is to calculate, <coughs> excuse me, from the nominal value, we need to calculate the real value. Now, if you remember from the first lecture, the way to calculate a real value is just to divide the nominal value by P. In fact, let's go back to lecture one and see if we can find it mm, right there. So let's take a look here. So if we want to find the real GDP, all we have to do is we have to take the nominal GDP and if we divide it with the price level, here's the price level right here. So we're going to do the exact same thing here. And what we are going to do is we're going to multiply, uh, divide both sides by the price level. So M divided by P equals to Y divided by P times LI. And so we just write it like this, M by P equals to Y times LI, where MP, M by P is the real supply and Y Notice this is no longer dollar Y, it's just Y. This is the real income. And this right here, this is the LM relation. So we have derived the ICE relation, which was right here. And now we have the LM relation. So it, it, it might not be immediately obvious to all of you what this relationship means. So let me explain a little bit more. And before I do that, uh, so just for you guys to know, is that there are two ways of analyzing the LM relationship. One is a more traditional way of doing it. And that is what I will do first. 
but then I will also show you a more modern approach to analyzing the LM relationship and which is what we will follow for the rest of the course. But just for you all to know, let's take a look at the traditional approach first. So let me write down the LM relation first. Y times L. Okay, and the idea is that in the short run, and remember that we are still within the short run analysis phase of the course. So in the short run, the price level is fixed in the short run. So in the long run, obviously, we know that the price level will vary, go up, go down, and whatever mostly go up in most cases, but at the, in the short run, we're assuming that this is fixed. And what we also know is that M, which is the money supply, is controlled by the central bank, which once again means that M is fixed in the short run. So obviously the central bank can increase or decrease the money supply in the economy if they choose to do so. But, you know, we're assuming that in the immediate future, within the next few days, within the next few weeks or months, central bank is not going to do that. They're going to hold it fixed. Okay. So now that's very interesting because once we make this to assumptions. What that means is that left side of this equation is fixed. M is fixed in the short run, P is fixed in the short run. So the left side is no longer changing. What does that mean? That means, see, the only thing that can change is income in the economy that can change and the interest rate which can change. And what happens? when one of them change. So suppose, uh, okay, let me write this down again, down here, MP equal to Y times L, right? And suppose income increases. Okay, so this go up. This is fixed. So think about this. On the right side of the equation, one thing has increased. The left side of the equation cannot change. Therefore, to maintain the equality, to ensure that the right side and the left side are equal, what has to happen? What has to happen is that this has to fall. Right, so Y has increased. If LI falls by an equal amount, then the equality of the equation is maintained and the right side is equal to the left side. But remember that LI is a negative relationship. That means that if you want the whole of Li to fall, you will need interest rates to go up. If interest go up, Li will fall. And if Li falls, the equality will be maintained. So what we see is that when income increases, interest rate also has to, must increase. Okay. What that means is that if we do this, and if I have I here, and so this relationship, what that basically means is that this is the LM curve. It's an upward sloping curve, which basically means that when 
income goes up, interest rate has to go up and the vice versa. If income is going down, I is going down. And that is basically the traditional way of thinking about LM relation. Okay. But, and this is not a bad but, this, this is actually a good but for all of you. There is a more modern way of thinking about this relationship and this modern approach is considerably easier. So the modern approach is that uh, in the last 10, 15 years, the way the central banks around the world operate has considerably changed. And so in the traditional approach, we were assuming that what the central bank does is they hold money supply as fixed and let everything else uh, move around in the economy. But central banks no longer operate like this. So in the modern approach, what we see is that I is controlled by the central bank which means that obviously I can fluctuate, it can go up or down, but it is fixed in the short run. So central bank is no longer trying to control the money supply. What central bank is trying to do is control the interest rate. And if we follow this approach, See, our work is considerably simplified. We put Y here, we put I here. The important thing is that I is fixed. I is no longer moving around. So this is our LM curve. Suppose I naught is what the government wants and regardless of what's happening to Y, this is fixed and nothing is going to change. So the reason I talked about the traditional approach is because this is still a valid relationship. It's not a case that this is what economists used to believe and it has been proved wrong and so no longer does this. What has happened is how central banks around the world operate has changed over time. This relationship is still valid but this isn't really how central banks operate anymore. What they do now is follow this approach where they fix a rate of interest and they let everything else move around just to maintain this, all right? So that is the end of our LM analysis and also our uh, fifth lecture. I'm going to very quickly show you guys what we're going to do in the sixth lecture. I think some of you may have already guessed is we're going to bring in the LM curve. We're going to bring in the ice curve. And what we are going to do is we're going to let these curves move. So for example, the LM curve might move down. The ice curve might move here. And so what you see is that there are different equilibriums. What the government does is they use monetary policy and fiscal policy to move around the LM and the IS curve to regulate the economy. And so that's what we will be doing in lecture six, is talk about how the government manipulates the IS and the LM relationship to regulate and stabilize the economy. But this is it for today's lecture.